Hi, this is Realtor Mike Thomas from Palm Beach County, Florida. Just wanted to give you another update. I just posted a video on uh, buying houses subject to an existing mortgage, which I call the big scam. Uh, if you haven't watched it, I think you should. Uh, this is a follow-up video for that. And that is people were wondering, well, Mike, what if I'm in trouble? What do I do? Um, how do I get out of a certain situation? What if you're going through a divorce or has lost a, a job or maybe uh, lost a loved one and you're going through some hardship, what do you do? Well, what most people have done in the past is they just defaulted on the mortgage and they try to stay in the house as long as they could rent free before the sheriff finally uh, knocks on your door and throws all your stuff to the street. That's traditional. Uh, I think we're much better than that. I think that there's other situations out there uh, that we do as real estate agents. So if you feel that you're in trouble, I would contact a real estate agent and say, hey, can you help me out? Uh, the real estate agent will evaluate everything to see if there's any equity in your house. Uh, maybe if there is, um, they can work in a way that you can walk away with maybe a little bit of cash in your pocket. If there is no equity in your house, um, there are a few options. You can give the house back to the bank in lieu of foreclosure. Just basically sign the deed over to the bank and say, here's the house. Um, I can't do it anymore. Uh, so giving the house back in lieu of foreclosure is an option. Uh, other options could be is you could go to the bank and ask them if there is a program that they have for people under hardship. Uh, tell them that, hey, I'm getting divorced or I've lost a loved one or I lost my job. Is there something that I can do to keep the house? I'm going through a tough time now, but it should only be temporarily. Um, or the other thing is, is selling the house short sale, which basically means that uh, you hire a real estate agent, the real estate agent puts your house on the market. If the offers come in lower than what you owe on the house, then what happens is we, the real estate agent asks the bank to take less money than what you owe. It's called a short because it costs money for the bank to foreclose on you. Uh, I think the last number I heard was somewhere around $30,000 to foreclose on the house. So if they have to spend $30,000 to foreclose on a house, maybe they're willing to take 10, 15, $20,000 less uh, that you may owe them. Uh, that may be a situation as well. Personally, what I think that uh, our government should impose is a freeze for people that are actually going through hardships and can prove a hardship by you know, documentation, I lost my house, I'm on unemployment, I, you know, whatever it is, I'm going through a divorce, here's my legal documents, uh, or I just lost a loved one, here's my death certificate, and maybe give them three, maybe anywhere from three to six months to get back on their feet by freezing the actual mortgage itself. That would be perfect. Uh, because in the course of a 30-year mortgage, there's going to be some times where you may hit a rough spot or two. And I know that banks are not very um, accommodating when it comes to that. Uh, the last thing they try to do with COVID-19, which was something ridiculous, they, they actually said, well, we're going to just take your mortgage payment that you owe and add it to the back of the loan. Which is like, wow, ridiculous, because it takes a long time to buy the the principal down and let's say your mortgage payment is I don't know three thousand dollars a month and so for the next six months which is eighteen thousand dollars they add on to the back of the loan um now they have this other program where you had to pay that eighteen thousand dollars back and I'm thinking wow if they're having trouble making their house payment now how are they going to make the house payment and pay back the $18,000 that you added to the back of the loan within a one year period or something like that. Um, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I think that, 
you know, maybe you can write your congressman or congress or senator um, and suggest to them, hey, if people are going through a hard time, maybe the bank shouldn't be so tough on the owner because by the time they buy the house, foreclose on the house and spend $30,000 plus to, to get the house back. And the current owner may not take very well, take good care of the house. I've seen people do some crazy things to homes, you know, really messing them up bad before leaving because of anger issues or anything else because their home is being taken away. And who is a better buyer for your home than the owner who's already in your home? That's the way that I look at it. Because when I go to the bank, I'm going, okay, well, who's the best person for this home? The person who's living in it right now, who owns it, who's been making the mortgage payment, he just had a rough spot. And maybe if you can give them three months to six months time to get their affairs back in order, they can continue making the payment. And it would be great if you can freeze um, maybe the interest or something along that line where they wouldn't have to make, um, where they can actually get back on their feet again and work things out. But so uh, just to recap everything for you in this video, you can give the, the home back in lieu of foreclosure to the bank. Uh, you can sell the home, maybe with a profit, maybe as a short sell through a real estate agent, or you can negotiate with the bank directly and say, listen, I've, I have this hardship and I need a little bit of time. What kind of programs do you have that's available that actually are beneficial? Um, and those are the ways that you can help save your own home if you get into a bind. Um, this is the follow-up on my video on uh, buying homes subject to an existing mortgage, which I believe is a big scam that uh, people are doing. And um, it's a scam because if you go to someone and you ask them to sign over the deed to a house, the bank has to be notified and it's called an alienation clause. And basically what that means is if you don't own the house anymore, they're going to call that note due. And they're going to go, we want all of our money right now, right away. And the only way that the bank won't know it is if you do something which, you know, I believe is illegal. And that's not notifying the bank that there is a new owner. And um, having them continue to think that you're still the owner of this property uh, because they don't always check. I mean, it's not like they are on a daily basis checking to see if a deed has been recorded in every single county. Um, that would be an enormous undertaking, but with computers and everything, maybe they have a way of doing that. I don't know. I'm not in that business. I'm a real estate agent um, and I have been for almost 30 years, but these are some ways that maybe it could help save your home. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Um, please give us a like if you like us. Feel free to share our video on your, so on your favorite social media network. Help us out. Uh, we'd love to continue to make videos for you. So um, let me know if there's any way that I can improve on my videos. I'm becoming less camera shy. So I uh, hope that helps. And um, good luck to you.